My name is V the Victim, and welcome to my review for Gilmore Games Season 3, Episode 11, The Finale. There are going to be massive spoilers in this, so please close the video now if you haven't seen the episode yet. This one's going to be a little bit different, as you can probably tell already if you've seen the other ones. Um, face cam, not, you know, pictures of my character or anything. Um, obviously, I... Spoilers won the Gilinor Games, Season 3. Um, I didn't want this to be like this crazy, scripted, self-indulgent victory lap. I wanted it to be more of like a discussion because I think that I don't have too much to say about the episode itself, like the content, the challenges. Um, I really just kind of wanted to do a more freeform discussion that has a lot less, like there's no politics or anything. It's all just it's over, you know, the whole thing's crazy. I, I, I still can't believe that I won. I still can't believe the whole series has aired. Like it's nuts. Um, but before I do anything else, I just want to thank soup for inviting me and just pouring his heart and soul into the Gilinor games. He put in so many hours, so much time and effort. I mean, it was incredible. Um, I also want to thank the other competitors. It was awesome. They accepted me back into GG, like I'd never stop being a content creator, and they made the whole show an absolutely incredible experience. I mean, the banter, the competition, the the snaking, the voting, like, unreal. I mean, it was so fun. And then, last but absolutely not least, I just want to thank all the fans. Um, obviously, the people that cheered for me, but even the people that cheered against me, um, just everyone who watched. I hope that you all have left a like and a comment on the video for soup like i you know boost this man's engagement please i hope you're all subscribed gg season four is in the works you're gonna want to be getting those notifications when it comes through um but yeah thank you all so much for watching and especially for those of you who supported thank you for watching these reviews it's been super motivating to have people watching and commenting and you know to be able to like bait people with pretending to join the inner circle and, you know, having some, like, behind-the-scenes talks with some of the other competitors who are sending me DMs, like, especially Solo Mission about various things. I mean, it's just been awesome. And then also, thanks so much for the reception on my new series here on YouTube, which is Sequestered, Region Locked, Quest Iron Man. You know, if you haven't seen it, I'd love for you to check it out. Uh, if not, no worries. But anyway, I feel like I've been rambling for so long already. I want to get into the actual final, the GG episode, you know, the review the episode for which I'm reviewing. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think it pretty much speaks for itself in terms of the challenges. Soup did an absolutely incredible job of editing. I think that he really included, at least from my part of things, pretty much every important gameplay moment that happened was in the episode. It was crazy. Like for a lot of the other challenges, there were so many competitors, so many POVs that he was editing that I think he really had to leave a lot out. And so I could throw in some behind the scenes, some extra context here. Really not that much. He did such a good job of taking everyone's perspectives. Well, especially mine, because I know it was in it and including it. And um, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, really so many things could have gone differently. Like I've already had, of course, you see all the, you see YouTube comments, you get Twitter DMs and people adding you and all this other crazy stuff. Really... I just happened to be that guy on that day to get the win in GG. But, I mean, obviously you have Bodhi is just getting memed to shit for dying with three sharks in LMS. And, of course, he regrets that, I'm sure. Um, but even that, like, so if Bodhi wins the LMS challenge, he gets two more points than he did. Boom, that's two points. He would have beaten me, right? Well, if Bodhi wins the LMS challenge, he gets to pick his teammate for the next challenge, which is the hide-and-seek challenge where we went to the fairy godfather. Bodhi didn't know that one. So if Bodhi picked anyone but me or Framed, the only two people in the challenge who actually knew it right off the rip, then he actually would have gotten either dead last or second, and maybe I would have won and gotten more points. So there's so many what ifs, and everyone's like, oh, if this didn't happen, then this would have happened. It's like, well, not necessarily. Um, I've also seen a lot of people talking about like looting being used as a moneymaker. You know, I won the moneymaking solo challenge with looting neck reels, which of course caused controversy. I mean, it's, it's the internet, everything causes controversy, but I don't know. I, I've seen like, well, 
everyone did their own solo money making challenges. So in a solo money making challenge, you shouldn't be able to use stuff from other players. And I mean, I kind of agree. Like it makes sense where they're coming from with that, but at the same time, everyone else got drops and loot that they sold on the GE to other players not involved in the Gilinor games. It's like, so how many MMO elements do you really want to take out of the challenges just so you can make it like fair? And I don't know what the answer to that is. Cause I think that looting neck reels could have gone really poorly and then no one would be saying, well, it shouldn't have been allowed. It was just because it did the best that people said it. I think also next season, I'm going to talk a little more about next season in the future, like later in this video. Uh, but just right now, I, I thought that I had a really cool idea where teams would like be forced to go to a certain region of the game and pick a moneymaker. And then like everyone can see what regions people chose. And as, as a result, you get to ban one moneymaker. So it's like, everything's allowed. No moneymakers off limits. Because in this season, you know, Chinchampas, Gauntlet, Revenants, all that weren't allowed. Um, or at least in the finals when Revenants were banned. Or actually, I don't know if they were banned. Were they? It would have been tough to earn 100k in the time. But anyway, it'd be cool to do something like that. Where then, if you see like three people pick Wilderness and Revenants are allowed, you're like, okay, I should ban Revenants. And all of a sudden, they're locked into Wilderness. They might be fucked. And I don't know. I think that'd be really cool. So there, there are so many different shakeups you can do to challenges to like get the most out of them, even if they're repeats. So I really hope like Soup, there's so many things he could do in the future for this challenge, for a ton of challenges. And I think the more options are open to people, the more interesting the challenge is rather than restricting all these things that people are like, well, this is OP. Well, this relies on other players. I like the idea of doing something a lot more open and getting creative with it. Kind of like dead man mode where the last dead man mode, they had all these like relics and stuff. I think that was a cool idea. Allow more, but like make it creative. So, um, and then another thing that could have been different too, I just came to mind was like Will fighting the corrupted Hunliff at the end. I think if he kills that his team wins the challenge and then he draws with me for first place points worth or points wise in the games at the very last challenge. So, uh, so many what ifs, man. I think if you run that final a hundred times, I think someone different wins like every time, you know, I, I told somebody yesterday that if we ran the final 100 times, I think Bodhi would have won like 80 of them. And I mean, maybe I would have won 10 and Will would have won 5 and everyone else would have won a couple. Like, but <laughs> I just happened to be that guy on that day and that's it, you know, and I, I'm super grateful for that. But I think everyone had a blast. Everyone had a lot of fun. Everyone was kind of disappointed with certain aspects of their own performance, myself included. What a, what an experience. I, I, uh, I'm just grateful that I got to be on. I never even expected that I'd stay after the second episode. I never expected that I'd last after the third episode. Even in the final, I was like hoping that I'd get top three, expecting maybe fourth or fifth at best. Like, so, uh, I mean, the whole thing was an incredible experience and I'm super glad to have gotten to do that. And also then get inspired by solo missions, awesome reviews to make these reviews. And I thought it was funny too. Like early on, people were like, I think you're making these because you won, or I think you're making these because you got top X or whatever. And honestly, I can, I can honestly say that unless I got eliminated like one or two episodes later, I would have made these no matter what, because they've been a blast. Um, and so, I mean, watching solo missions before I was on the season were it was just so cool that I was like, I have to do this. And that's honestly why I got involved in the political side of things quite a bit too was once I got in there and I had the chance to play between alliances and try to be a little like creative and fun with it, I was like, I know I won't do what Solo Mission does because he, I mean, he's the guy, he does it best. But, uh, oh man, it was so cool to get to like, I was like kind of in the same way that I played kind of in the gray area in the middle of the alliances for a while during the season. I feel like I played in the gray area in the middle of who people were in the season too. Cause like, I did a couple of villainous things. I did a couple of clever political things. I did a little bit of cactus in the desert, like independent play where I just said, fuck it. I'm my own person and I'm just going to have my friends backs or whatever. Like it's so cool. Cause they're, they're just all these different creators in the games and they all do something incredibly well. And yeah, I mean, I think I was sort of just like, I didn't do anything incredibly well. But I did a lot of little bits of different things. And it was so cool to get the chance to kind of like ride the line in the middle and 
have a lot of fun cherry picking the things I liked about different people's games and strategies and all that. But at the same time, I didn't have to like give up being myself to play a character, which there's so much awesome character playing being done by other people. There's nothing wrong with it. But for me, like in the same way, Bodhi got to be his authentic self playing his own game completely and just being like, I'm the cactus, (laughs) which was hilarious, of course. Um, And like playing his own game. I got to play my own game, which was a mix of like all the other things everyone was good at. And ultimately that's what won the final, you know, being good enough at all the challenges combined, eight challenges to have enough points to be on top at the end. And yeah, I mean, oh, such a, such an incredible experience. And, um, yeah, I then want to move on. Sorry. I'm like kind of all over the place. This is what happens when you don't really write things out i'm like i can't even i'm trying to like make eye contact with the camera too because i haven't been on a webcam in ages with any audience really um except for a couple of my friends so the whole thing's crazy but i want to talk a little bit about the format of this season and then the format of the next season so this season was not a solo season it just wasn't people a lot of people have been complaining throughout the season like when there's a team banning or a team challenge where they feel like someone good got held back by someone worse they're like oh it's a solo season this shouldn't be happening and i free agents and solo not the same thing soup wanted a really cool creative way to get a lot of different creators working with each other in different environments and to do things like have dynamic teams throughout the season did a really, really good job of that. You know, it brought about things like Torvesta throwing the underground pass challenge and creating all this drama and setting up a skill specs Torvesta PvP banning, like, which was the coolest thing ever. I mean, and again, you can argue like, well, it was RNG, it's a bad banning. But I think even those people have to admit the entertainment value of the banning was up there. It was so good. Um, and then, yeah, so I think that... I like the format. I think it gave a lot of people the opportunity to show their own skills, but at the same time, it's really important in an MMO to play with other people and be good at teamwork and adapting and working with others. And so, like, actually, something that came to mind was I played Classic WoW for a bit, uh, like the vanilla one before the Burning Crusade expansion, whatever. If you don't know about this, you don't care. Fair enough. But there's like a PvP rank where you had to just grind a ton of hours to get it, rank 14, the top rank. And you needed a team, a coordinated good team, to do it. So you had to be good to get into the team and play on your own merits to win all the games. But at the same time, you had to be well-liked enough to have a good team. And you weren't going to make rank 14 without playing like 23 hours a day if you didn't have a good team that played together and liked each other, or at least tolerated each other. And I think that there was a lot of that in this season too in GG, where... It's really important to be able to stay cool under pressure, to be a good teammate, to like, you know, even just the political things behind the scenes, to be a good alliance member, to be a good leader, like to make shot calls like in GG, like in uh, episode 10, where I was the caller for our team in the PvP from scratch challenge where we level our accounts. Like it's, I think a pure solo season would have been really boring And I think that the people who are complaining about that format probably just had one big reason to dislike it. Like, say, if their favorite creator was Solo Mission and he got out and they feel like Eviescape dragged him down in the banning. Like, okay, I got cut off by the doorbell ringing, so I got really distracted. But point being, Solo Season and, like, a format that allows people to show off their skills but in an entertaining way in an MMO where they work with others... I think it's just the best of both worlds. Oh, also, people had a bunch of issues with, like, the, the final being six players instead of, like, two or four or whatever, um, as well as, like, double eliminations late in the game, like Evie and Solo getting out. But you have to think about it from Soup's perspective, where he doesn't want to eliminate a bunch of creators too early, and he doesn't want to make the season too small. So... This could all be avoided if in 10 episodes you start with 12 people and at the end you have two or three without doing any double eliminations. But you want to include more creators than that. You know, he already only has to cut it down to 20 when he'd like to invite like 30 or 40 just because that many people would just be pure hell for him to edit. <laughs> that's that's where he's at with that, I'm sure. So you want to make like as many people 
stay as long as possible so their audiences want to watch them because most of the people that i mean gg is nothing without the viewership and creators are nothing without their viewer base and so you just need people you need eyes on the creators they like watching and caring about the series to have a it be something that is feasible to do as a full-time content creator and so i think soup did his best to balance keeping people in to keep interest in the show with also inviting a ton of people to get maximum interest and allow the most people he could to participate in GG. Cause that's something else that he said is that it's so hard for him to choose who to invite and who not to, because almost everyone who's involved in the community would probably love to be in GG, but he can only invite so many people. And then he needs to pare it down to a reasonable number of people for the final. And I think that, I mean, sure he could have done it differently, but could he have done it better it's hard to say. I think he did really well considering that he had to make it appealing to as many people as he could for as long as possible. And I think the final was awesome. I think it had a really good format. It was really fun to play in. Maybe the only thing I would tweak thinking about it now would be to reverse the duo and solos so that duos were first making the final challenge a solo challenge. I think maybe that would have been a little better, but again, it's hard to say. I mean, I think the final came out incredibly fun to watch and it was incredibly fun to play. So, oh, also something I have to mention, I can't believe I forgot this, was I tried to pick Settled for the very last challenge initially to do the monster mash with because I knew that he'd already done it and I figured he'd be probably the best person to team up with it since he already theory crafted it all. Um, But that would create a pair that had already been together no matter what, which wasn't allowed. So I had to pick someone else and I was like, okay, fine, I'll pick Bodhi. And the only reason I picked Bodhi was because, well, first of all, he's really good. But the other reason is he himself was the one who had told me that I was winning, basically. It was either one or two challenges before this. He was like, by the way, have you guys been counting all the points or whatever? And I was like, nope. And like three other people or whatever were like, yeah. And somehow people were like throwing it around and everyone said how many points everyone had. And I was either winning or I was losing by one or something. And I was like, okay, well, now I know how many points I have. So I just tracked it for like one more challenge. And then I knew that I was ahead going into the last one. Or I thought I was ahead going into the last one. and was like, well, if I pick Bodhi, I, I win. So I did it. Um, but actually, I, was trying, I tried to pick Settle because it did feel a little slimy to do the picking Bodhi as my partner thing. It is what it is, though. Okay, so anyway, that's really all I have to say about this season. I think it was incredibly fun. I think Soup did a great job. It's easy to it's easy to complain about things in hindsight, but I think that if you know what his motivations had to be as a content creator who needs to get views on the series and appeal to as large of an audience as possible, almost everything makes perfect sense and it would be hard to do any of it better, in my opinion. I know I wouldn't have done better, so I don't feel like I should criticize him other than maybe just offering polite, friendly, constructive feedback for things I don't I don't think were done as well as they could have been which is something he wants. Um, But anyway, for next season, apparently Soup has already decided on the format. I would love to see something that has small teams. For anyone who has watched Survivor, the reality show, there's like usually, I think, three, two or three smaller teams called tribes of contestants that play against each other in like daily challenges. And then the losers have to choose someone to get eliminated. I think that could be a really sick format for GG because if you have like five people per team, say you invite 20 people, four teams, five people per team, then you could do like Tob. So imagine like, imagine a Tob team that has like one or two expert, like Grandmaster PVMers, a PVPer who has no fucking clue how to do PVM, and then like two funny people who also never do endgame PVM. And they're just like in the struggle trying to complete a Tob before three other groups that have exactly the same like group makeup. I think that'd be the coolest thing. It'd be so funny. That'd be great moments. And then you could still do other challenges like, you know, hide and seek or whatever. Um, I think that'd be awesome. So I hope that whatever format soup has in mind is, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be great. Next thing is who's going to be in GG season four. Um, I mean, everyone always throws around so many names and, Soup can only invite so many people. So ultimately, there's like some people that I think are just guaranteed to get an invite no matter what. 
Um, and that's like probably like the top five people with the biggest audience, I'd say at least. And then like there are certain people that just are such an integral part of the games as an entertainer that I think you have to invite them. So like for that category, like solo and EV escape, boom, those two, I feel like should just be in it period. Um, and then like, as far as audience size, I mean, Bodhi, you know, Bodhi is going to be there. Not only is he super entertaining, but he is the most popular RuneScape player on the planet. Settled. Same deal. Torvesta. Like, and then, oh, entertainment, by the way, skill specs didn't say him. Pff, duh. No brainer. Um, so yeah, I mean, the other way that Soup decides a lot of these too is he has a survey that's out. Um, I actually put the link in the description because he and I would love for you to give your input. Um, he puts out a survey and he says, like, what'd you like about the season? What'd you dislike? Who did you enjoy seeing? Who d- wasn't in that you would enjoy seeing? So please, I mean, fill that out. He would, If you haven't, give your input. He'd love to get it. And I definitely have some selfish motivation here. If people did enjoy me being in and say that, then... I may be back for season four, which for me would be incredible. But I mean, even if I'm just there as a viewer, it'll be awesome. That's really about it, honestly. I just want to thank everybody again. GG season three, I I had this huge like monologue when Soup asked me about it for my last confessional about winning and like how it felt, whatever. And the part that made it into the video was like, RuneScape's about these moments and I'll never forget being in GG and winning it. But that's what I said. I had like this huge middle part that I just rambled for like minutes that got cut out that I kind of want to include here just briefly. And it's like my experience as a content creator in RuneScape can really be like, there's just like a few events that were just huge for my channels, my experience. And this was just another one of them, you know? So I started out, I got blown up. My channel got blown up with the Inferno release where I did really well Everyone was like, who the hell is this guy? And I got so many followers and people enjoying the stream and all that. Um, people were talking about me on YouTube and on the subreddit and all this other stuff. And then Top came out not that long after. And I was still like, everyone saw me as this really great PVMer. So I got to get in and do some of the first Tobs with Bodhi, Wooks, Cloud Badass, Dalek, like all these awesome, Lake, all these people, Zulu. And like, we got the first Tob drop. Like I got to do that. And that was awesome. And then dead man mode, the first dead man mode, you know, like Bodhi dropped me on stream for like a 30 mil key and lost his shit. And like, ah, uh, you know, and then GG season three, I get to participate, come in as a sub. I have like no self-confidence, but everyone's really accepting and friendly. And I, and at the end of the day, I take it down. And it's just another one of those moments that make having been and being a RuneScape content creator like one of the greatest things that I've done in my adult life. And like in my head, I want to be like, that sounds pathetic, but it shouldn't like, it's so fun. The community is so incredible. Not only the streamers and the creators, but the audience who just care so much and support so much. Like, ah, man, it was an incredible experience. This is going to be my last review. Hopefully season four will come out. I'll get to stir the pot a little bit and make some more, but if not, Thank you so much for watching. I would love for you to check out my new series, which is, I'll put a link in the description, but it's on the channel already up and feel free to follow me on Twitch too. I would love for that to be a thing because I will be streaming probably at least once a week I'd like to do there. Um, I do work full time on the side, but all this stuff has just gotten me so interested in getting back and creating some content. And I would love for as many people as possible to interact with me because that's the most rewarding part of content creation. It's been the most rewarding part of playing RuneScape since old school came out and I've been playing for almost 10 10 years. That's so crazy. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you wonderful people are doing well. Please do subscribe to my channel here. Follow my channel on Twitch if you want to stay updated and involved with my content and hopefully I will see you soon.